-hmm. And that's what the luncheon has, has brought about. It's, it's become such a diverse audience. And that's what I love about it because that's what Martin Luther King was about. It was, he was about being there for everyone. Right. It didn't matter what your race was. Mm -hmm. he, he linked arms with everyone mm -hmm. when he was out there mm -hmm. working and marching. And, mm -hmm. and we wanted to put something together to complement mm -hmm. the march that takes care uh, immediately after our luncheon that takes place. And I think we've been able to do that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we'll get a good turnout again this year. Well, I certainly hope we will. And I want to remind people, it's not the typical holiday like the 4th of July when we are out barbecuing and having a bunch of things. Or unfortunately, Christmas has become a day of shopping. Right. But Martin Luther King holiday focuses on a day of service right. in which we are to come together as a nation and to be concerned about each other mm -hmm. and a day of service. And hopefully it will propel not only into a day of service, but a life of service, because that's what he was all about. Right. In fact, he gave up his life in Memphis, serving the needs of people that we normally look at as, well, they were just sanitation workers. Right. But it didn't matter to him whether you were a bank president, a sanitation worker, whether you were white or whether you were black, he felt that everyone should be treated equally and fairly. And uh, his whole life was dedicated to service. And I certainly hope that our community can at least dedicate an hour, two, or three, whatever amount of time it takes to go to the luncheon mm -hmm. and then become a part of the march. And, and hopefully we'll have some decent time a as it relates to that march. Well, hopefully that happens. And I wanted to mention, too, something that we're doing, particularly with it being our 20th anniversary, mm -hmm. a, perc a percentage of each of the ticket sales will go towards Peoria Promise. Fantastic. And if people aren't aware of what that is, it just allows individuals who are going to college at Illinois Central College mm -hmm. to have their um, uh, scholarships. It's a scholarship so mm -hmm. they can get their, their coursework, their books mm -hmm. paid for. And we want to do a little bit of something. Mm -hmm. Education is such an important, vital thing to our youth. And a lot of them can't afford to go to school because they can't get the, the funds together. So this is just our little part. And that's in keeping with Martin Luther King fought for. Yes. Was a good education for all children. Mm -hmm. I personally met him when he was in Chicago uh, back in 1966, I believe it was, when he was marching there uh, in protest against the school superintendent and the Chicago Public wow. Schools that was highly segregated at the time, as well as housing. And I had the privilege, along with a number of other gentlemen from South Bend, and we were part of that march and that protest. So education and the mm -hmm. use of whatever funds that you're able to get uh, certainly would be valuable in Absolutely. keeping with what his purpose was. And uh, I want to thank you for that. In fact, it will lead to the next segment because we're going to be going to ICC and interviewing some students Excellent. that are currently at ICC, some of which may be a part of Peoria Promise, mm -hmm. to kind of get their views and reflections of what Martin Luther King means to them. Please stay tuned. I think you'll enjoy that segment also. And thank you. Thank you for having me. Do you know who we are? PCCEO, helping people, changing lives for every stage of life. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue our discussions about Martin Luther King, and I have with me at this time here at Illinois Central College two young men who are students here at Illinois Central College. I have immediately to my left Johnny Gordon and to his left Jeremy Shorter. Gentlemen, welcome to Captions. Thanks for having us. I wanted to have an opportunity to talk with two young men, and particularly two black men, who weren't even born at the time when Martin Luther King was alive, but was fighting for what you are now a part of, and that's equal education and an opportunity for you to fulfill your dream and to be the best that you can be. Mm -hmm. As you have heard and as you heard about Dr. Martin Luther King, has 
what you've heard or seen or read have any influence in terms of your life, in terms of where you are today or what you strive to be today? Let me start with you, Jay. Uh, yeah, I definitely think so. I think he made things a lot easier um, as far as how we, especially how we travel on the bus. You know, uh -huh. we no longer have assigned seats or expected to sit somewhere on the bus. Um, so yeah, he broke down a lot of walls that, you know, who knows, might even still be up to today if it wasn't for mm -hmm. him. So. Okay. What about you, Jeremy? Um, do you feel that there's been any impact in terms of where you are in life today or what you want to do with your life as a result of him? Oh, yes. It has a great impact upon my life as far as the uh, virtues and values and the whole uh, self-respect. And you have to see yourself as wanting to be equal, you know, out here, uh, especially being a, a young colored uh, young man or mm -hmm. and women. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think the motivation that he just brought to us and the whole uh, nonviolence movement is, and um, the movement and bringing of the uh, self-control and being professionally as, uh, as far as the new age is time, that, that had a great effect on me as far as where I'm going today. Well, um, I had the opportunity to meet him personally as oh, well wow. as to have seen him on TV mm -hmm. and a lot of the things. In fact, he was assassinated a few months before I moved to Montgomery, Alabama mm -hmm. to be a principal of a high school there. Mm -hmm. And so I had kind of a, a, a close sense in terms of who he was, what he was about. He also came to Illinois to fight discrimination um, that we were facing, particularly up in the Chicago area mm -hmm. and that type of a thing. I tell you, he would be proud of the two of you and the millions of other young men and women who are aspiring to be all that they could be because that was all that he was about. Right. He, he wasn't about anything great. He just wanted you to have equal opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. He wanted you to be judged, not by the color of your skin, but by your content of your character and what you wanted to be. Um, is this your first year, uh, Johnny? No, here, <laughs> actually, uh, I, I got an ICC after I graduated, which was like ten years ago. But then I worked mm -hmm. for uh, Caterpillar for eight okay. years, and now I'm coming back uh, to try to get my degree. Uh -huh. So yeah, and then my wife, she just uh, graduated. Well, she's graduating this Saturday, mm -hmm. and she's an RN. Mm -hmm. So we had a pinning ceremony last night, so it was really nice. What are you majoring in? I'm majoring in communications. Communications. Yeah, so interested in the same thing that we're doing here mm -hmm. so yeah now are you associated with a radio program or something yeah like that we have a, a radio program here at ICC it's actually downstairs uh -huh. uh, it's been here for like a year and a half 90.7 FM and we have a talk show mm -hmm. harvesting dreams okay uh, a program put on uh, by mr. Bryson mm -hmm. and uh, we talk about issues dealing with african-american men and women mm -hmm. here at ICC and right. also in Peoria area. so yeah we're doing really good too well, that would be another step in his march for justice. Yes. And he'd be proud of what you are today and what you're striving to be in the future. Thank you. That means a lot, especially to somebody who, you know, met him and even walked with him. So that means a yeah. lot. Yeah. Now, what about you, Jeremy? What, uh, <coughs> how, how long have you been here at ICC? And uh, what are your future plans as far as a career? Well, uh, to answer your question, this is my fourth year okay. at ICC. Uh -huh. uh, I had a little journey once coming here. I'm originally from Indiana. Okay. And so I so am I, by the way. I'm from South Bend, Indiana. Where I'm from, from South Bend, Indiana. You uh, are? I went to Washington High School. Oh, no, world. man, don't pull my leg. <laughs> That's where I graduated from, and I was the black first black teacher at Washington High School oh, in yeah. 1963. Wow. That's, That's when I started teaching there after... Graduating from Ball State Teachers College. Oh, okay, I know that's that's in Muncie. I right. was looking at there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, just uh, ventured out here with my mother um, for a job relocation uh, mm -hmm. she's with. And uh, I, I'm undecided in what I actually want to major in. I switched my majors uh, about three or four times, but yeah. I'm just want to constantly just gain that uh, the, uh, the confidence as far as passing classes mm -hmm. and not just getting C's and D's and become an average, just change the little things in my life to make myself, again, the best that I want to be. There you go. And, like, lately I've been getting just the most higher praise from the uh, faculty. And, mm -hmm. and it means a lot when, you know, when someone cares about your education, not only that you care about it, but others feel or they give, they, uh, you know, care about it too. So, Well, you're fortunate to be at an Illinois Central College. 
I went to Ball State Teachers College, and now it's just called Ball State University. We didn't have a uh, Ag Bear Bryson or a Harvesting Dreams. Yeah. When I attended Ball State, there might have been about 10,000 students, and there were only about 100 black students. Mm -hmm. And um, I later found out, after I had left Muncie, that Muncie, Indiana, was the headquarters of the Ku Klux Klan in Indiana. Oh. And Indiana had more Klan members than any other northern state in the nation. Yeah. And I ran into a lot of discrimination, both on campus as well as in the community. I bet. So you're blessed to be in a place that is very supportive mm -hmm. and encouragement and so forth. And don't worry about changing majors. I changed my major three or four <laughs> times when I went to Ball State. Yeah. I started off as a math major because my mom encouraged me to in that, which I didn't care for. Then I right. went to uh, history, and I finally ended up in English, and that's where I, I graduated from. And as far as careers, what you basically need is a good basic education. Mm -hmm. As I said, I started off in 1963 as a high school English teacher and then I became a principal Then I was a school administrator and I've done a lot of different things so you know and I'm quite certain as you look ahead there's a lot of things that you may have an opportunity to do and be that right now aren't even in your mind to ever be mm -hmm. but the basic thing is you're getting an education and it doesn't matter how long it takes just stay focused and finish and uh, who knows? Powerful words right there. A who, bar. Focus and finish. You know, yep. <laughs> and, and who knows? Um, you may be a Martin Luther King. Mm. He wasn't born the national person that he was. He was right. just a young black man that grew up in the segregated South. Mm -hmm. He went to an all-black college called Morehouse. Mm. Right. He became a preacher. And when he went to Montgomery, in a sense, he was kind of drafted and pushed into the leadership of the so-called bus boycott. Mm. Uh, there are a lot of people who were afraid of that boycott. Yeah. And um, he was the new face in town. They kind of pushed him up, and he ended up being the leader. And not only was he a leader, he became a national and an international leader. Right. So, so you never know what the future may hold. But I want to compliment the two of you, and I hope that Thank some you. of the viewers who are out there in our audience tonight may recognize you, or if they don't recognize you through a personal relationship, just recognize you as some young black men here in the Peoria area right. who are making a choice. And that's what mm -hmm. it's about. It's, it's, it's about making choices right. and uh, choosing to put yourself in a position. Right. And I would, if I could, mm -hmm. like encourage, you know, other black men, you know, who are out there, you know, you may not think college is for you or education is for you, but um, the future, that's going to be the main key in order to get a decent job or even hold a decent position is, is that education. And I like to add one thing that, uh, that really helped me the most is just the whole, uh, you know, I, I, uh, attitude of not caring. Like we, we need to get our emotions, uh, like mostly invested in our futures and what we want as far as ourselves and the whole I don't care attitude we just need to kill that like for real just go and leave that alone and that that help you out every every day and right. it'll make you a better person in life so and it's good to have teachers we have teachers and professors here that help you along the way you know whether you black white whatever color you are to help you along the way and, you know sometimes that little extra push somebody saying that you can do it mm -hmm. uh, even taking their time to help you on a quiz give me more information on the test. I mean, they'll give you the tools if you ask for it. If you don't ask for it, right. you know, it's not fair, but if you ask for it, they'll definitely make sure that you get it, get what you need. 